I can't afford it. Money doesn't grow on trees. What do you think? I'm made of money? Money isn't everything. Money can't buy you happiness. Money can't buy you love. The rich get richer and the poor get poor. Or if you're religious, money is the root of all evil. And paraphrasing Jesus, a rich man cannot enter the kingdom of God. Or on the other side, get rich or die trying. But not to confuse, that last one isn't from the Bible. Husband, father, entrepreneur, realtor, a long list of other titles and descriptions, and landlord. Welcome to the And Landlord Podcast with me, Jonathan Taylor Smith, also known as JT, following a roadmap to financial freedom through residential rental real estate. Welcome to the And Landlord Podcast, 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 and, 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 and Lord and Lord Podcast. Welcome to episode number 33. How do you view money? Do you have any? Or does it flee from you as quickly as it comes near? I'm sure you've heard all those sayings before that I led with. You've likely said many of them yourself at some point. I know I did. Until I realized that thoughts and statements like those are poison traps. It poisons your mind when you think that way about money. As poor and broke people think that way. And they make statements like that. Rich people don't think this way. They don't speak like that unless they're trying to make themselves seem relatable to the poor and broke. So this will be one of the shorter episodes as I just want to quickly put some thoughts on your mind as to what holds most people back from obtaining real wealth in their lives. And it's not other people. Sure, there are many exceptions to that statement, but for the vast majority of us, despite racism and sexism, and all the other aspects of discrimination, phobias, stereotypes, and hostilities many of us encounter in life and on a daily basis, the number one obstacle we face lies between our own ears. Somewhere in our brain is us, and we are each our own biggest obstacle to overcome. For instance, I know for a fact that I am my biggest obstacle. To give you an example, it really makes me mad every time I'm driving through my neighborhood and I see a for sale sign out in front of one of my neighbor's homes. Yet, I'm a realtor. Do they know that? Probably not, because I'm too lazy to get off my butt and go knock on everyone's door in the neighborhood and say, hey, I'm a realtor. Do you know anyone who wants to buy or sell a home? I could be making tens of thousands of dollars a month more than what I'm making now if I would just get off my butt and go make the effort to knock on some doors, hand out a flyer, hand out a business card, give out a refrigerator magnet, anything to market the fact that I'm a realtor to my neighbors. I just don't do it. I don't want to do it. I dread the thought of having to do it. But if I did it, I would be far more successful in my realty business than I am now. So I am my own biggest obstacle. I know what I need to do. I'm fully capable of doing it. I just don't want to. So I have to make myself go do it. Or I can hire someone to do it for me, which is probably what I'll end up doing. But generally speaking, I know that doing it myself will be more effective. And I usually do things myself, at least initially, before hiring someone to do it. So that I know what's involved, how long it takes and everything related to the task that I'm now outsourcing. But my point is that there's nobody stopping me from going out and getting that money. The money's there. It's ready to be claimed. All I have to do is go get it. It's a matter of whether or not I want to put in the effort to go get it. That's the question. And even if one or two, maybe three of the hundreds of doors that I could go knock on resulted in a listing or a referral, that still 
thousands of dollars that's just sitting out there waiting for me to get it. It's almost that certain that I would if I just put in the effort. Even if I took the easy way out and just sent direct mailers, it would still have a certain level of success. It's just a matter of doing it. So who's my obstacle? There's no one out there stopping me from doing it. I am the obstacle. I, just like you, we are our own biggest obstacles to overcome. Maybe you've heard this quote. There are like five or ten people who have been credited with this quote. But it goes, watch your thoughts. They become words. Watch your words. They become deeds. Watch your deeds. They become habits. Watch your habits. They become character. And character is everything. So the first thing highlighted here are your thoughts. And for the sake of this episode and the statements I led with, I want to focus on what your thoughts are when it comes to money. Are you on either of the extremes? of money is the root of all evil, so you feel the effort to obtain money makes you a bad person, as are those who have it? Or the other side, get rich or die trying, so you're willing to do anything for money. Probably you're like most people, and while you may not think money itself is evil, you're likely harboring thoughts that many, or even most, who have a lot of it obtained it by less than ethical means. They had to lie, cheat, steal, rob, misrepresent, mislead, abuse, extort, or just got lucky. You may even look down on such people from a position of perceived ethical superiority or envy them, wishing you could strike it rich like you think they did. And in this process, you likely have accepted and even repeat many of the sayings like more money, more problems. In your thoughts, you've placed money in a place where having or pursuing it is a bad thing. Those thoughts become words like, I'd rather be happy than rich, as if you can't be both. And words like these become deeds that will make it much harder for you to become rich or wealthy. Those Anti-wealth deeds and actions will become ingrained, poor, or broke person habits that will ensure you'll never become rich. Money will forever flee from you if it comes near to you to begin with. And why would money stay with you if you treat it poorly? If you kick a dog, do you expect that dog to repeatedly return, to be kicked over and over again? Money is no different. If you mistreat it, It will leave you and likely not return. How you think about money will ultimately determine how you treat it and if you'll then be able to accumulate great amounts called wealth. You certainly won't obtain a lot of something you treat and think poorly of. Consciously or otherwise, you will do the needful to make sure that you have little to none of what you don't value. So let me repeat the statements that I led with. I can't afford it. Money doesn't grow on trees. What do you think I'm made of money? Money isn't everything. Money can't buy you happiness. Money can't buy you love. The rich get richer and the poor get poorer. Money is the root of all evil. A rich man cannot enter the kingdom of God. More money more problems. I'd rather be happy than rich. If you say these things to yourself or out loud, if you think this way about money, that is your biggest obstacle to ever being rich or obtaining wealth. Like I said, you are your biggest problem. There's nobody holding you back but you and your thoughts, words, deeds, actions, and habits When it comes to something we all claim to want more of, yet most of us do nothing serious or consistent to make that happen. And then we blame other people for our less than desired outcome. For me, just saying these things out loud create a feeling of dread within me. 
And thankfully, I don't think like this about money because money is not the root of all evil. Mark Twain said the lack of money is the root of all evil. Think about it. When people are doing things in line with that get rich or die trying mentality to get money and harming people and doing bad and evil in the world, it's not because they've got an abundance of money. They're doing those things because they lack money and they lack a mindset that tells them what else they could do in order to obtain that money. So they're willing to do anything and it doesn't matter if they have to go through you to get it. That is the root of evil. And I know that that one and the paraphrased a rich man cannot enter the kingdom of God from the Bible are the ones that get most of you. They got me too for a long time until I realized that many of the highly favored people spoken of in the Bible were really rich. Being rich wasn't the problem. It was how they got rich and what being rich brought out of them. So no need to belabor this point. My purpose of this episode is to get you to consider your thoughts about money. How do you speak about money? What are your deeds and actions related to the handling of money? What are your money habits? Are you a person who attracts money and opportunity for money? Or when opportunity comes your way, do you kick it in the face as you would an attacking dog while complaining about how you can't catch a break? I don't let opportunity pass me by. In fact, I seek out opportunity. Next week, I'm flying to Ohio for one day just to be in the room with a person who has many more rental units than I do. I hope to learn from this person, maybe even partner with him on deals. Would you take time off from work, spend money on a plane ticket, and pay for a hotel, (laughs) I use points for both, just to meet someone in person who is where you want to be doing what you want to do? Many would wonder why such a person would be willing to teach me anything as I then potentially become his competitor. You may likely wonder why I have this podcast telling what I'm doing, as you might then learn to become my competitor. The answer lies in how most successful people view money, the world, the universe, God. We have an abundance mentality. I don't think money in your pocket is money not in my pocket. You don't have to do badly for me to do good. Even if you're right here in Durham with me, I don't think you getting your first or another rental property is a loss for me. Congratulations. I'm happy for you because I'm still going to kill it in this business. And I'm happy you're along for the ride. And it gives me pleasure if I played any role in that. And hey, now Or at some point in the future, you might need a realtor or property manager. And here I am, having helped you in the past. And if you're a decent person, as most people are, you'll feel the need to reciprocate what I did for you. Or one day you may be in a position to be a private lender on one of my deals. Or you may send me a deal that you couldn't take down yourself or for which you need a partner. You see how my view of money and opportunity doesn't require that I step on your neck, lie, cheat, steal, or otherwise on the way up the ladder of success. In fact, it benefits me to bring you along on the journey so that you're in a position to push or pull me up as well. If I leave you behind, well, now I'm on my own. That's why I have this podcast. I want your company on this journey to wealth and financial freedom through rental real estate investing. So to that end, let's start working on how you view money because you can't associate with me if you have a negative view of money, wealth, or those who are rich. And likewise, you also need to stop or limit your association with those who kick money in the face or otherwise have thoughts, words, deeds, actions, and habits that make money flee. You've likely heard you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with, a quote attributed most often to 
motivational speaker, Jim Rohn. And there's the variant, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. So just like I mentioned in last week's episode, you might need to block or limit some people from having too much access and influence in your life. You also need to associate with people who think differently than those negative influences, because I'd actually expand that quote to more than just five people. You're influenced by far more than just five people you call friends or spend the most time with. Thankfully, you're also influenced by people you may never even have met in person. You're being influenced by just listening to podcasts like this one. Hopefully, I'm a positive influence for the better. You're also influenced when you read a book, watch a movie, buy the TV shows you watch, and the music that you listen to. So not just those with whom you associate directly and the people in your life, but all the information and media that you allow to enter your eyes, ears, and take hold in your mind, if you want it to or not. So limit your negative influences to the greatest degree possible. And a negative influence when it comes to obtaining wealth is anything that gives you a negative thought towards money, wealth, being rich, or those who are. Because how much more of a blessing do you think you'll be to those deserving people in your life now or those who are yet to come into your sphere of influence If you were the same great person you are now, but also rich, becoming rich won't make you a jerk unless you're already a jerk now, in which case you'll become an even bigger jerk. You won't suddenly become an asshole unless you're that now. Being rich won't make you something that you're not already. What it will do is bring to the forefront your true character in larger form. That's why the quote I read earlier ends the way it does. Watch your thoughts. They become words. Watch your words. They become deeds. Watch your deeds. They become habits. Watch your habits. They become character. And character is everything. If you're a decent and good person now, becoming rich will make you a great person. Because now you have the means to be a blessing to others. You'll also be an example and a guide to those you know and love as to how they can do the same. And you can bring them along for the ride. So let's get started on the journey by continuing what you're doing here. And get started on reading some books that will set these principles in your mind. And make those negative thoughts and sayings a thing of the past. Something you'll laugh about and feel sorry for the next person you hear saying those things. To do so, check out the books page at andlandlord.com forward slash books for titles like Secrets of the Millionaire Mind, Think and Grow Rich, The Richest Man in Babylon. There's another that I'm reading now and will get added to the page soon called Wealth Can't Wait. I've spoken of these books many times in other episodes of the podcast, so If you've not already, get a subscription to audible.com and start listening to these books. Listen on your way to and from work. Get some Bluetooth earbuds and listen to these anywhere you find yourself waiting for anything. And as you listen to each, send me an email at podcast at bluechariot.com or podcast at annlandlord.com. They both go to the same place. And let me know what you took away from the book. Reading these books and Rich Dad, Poor Dad literally changed my life as they put clear and concise words to thoughts that I already had, but honestly felt confused and even guilty about expressing. Telling certain people how I wanted to be rich made me feel like I was doing something wrong, like I was wrong for wanting this supposedly evil thing called money and wealth. Freed from this doubt, negative money thoughts, and guilt, suddenly money started to flow my way because my new thoughts on money changed my words, 
which change my deeds and actions to those which attract money, which became my habit. Now it's just who I am, my character to attract money and opportunity. Something great is going to happen for me tomorrow. If not tomorrow, then next week, certainly next month. This is why I know that my 2020 is going to be amazing because I'm going to make it amazing by doing the things as needed now to make that happen. So let me get off my butt and get ready to go knock on some doors and make some phone calls and send some direct mail pieces because there's money out there that doesn't yet know how to find me. comments on the blog and if you'd like to share your landlord horror story or have a comment or suggestion for the show call 844 USA blue and enter extension 263 which spells and on your keypad as in and landlord and leave a message it may be used on a coming show thank you be all that you are and and landlord Nothing on the preceding show should be considered specific, personal, or professional advice. Please consult an appropriate tax, legal, real estate, financial, or business professional for personal advice. The comments and opinions of any guest are their own. Information is not guaranteed. Any investment may have potential for both profit and loss. The host is speaking solely on behalf of Blue Chariot Media, LLC.